This was in Mangalore and uh, she had come from Mysore with a few volunteers from Mysore. So in the morning when we went for the games, uh, there were a few new people and uh, there was this one person who was everywhere, who was doing all these long frisbee throws with Sadhguru, uh, who was in the ball game everywhere, who was pointedly bent upon getting Sadhguru out, until then nobody knew who she was. At the end of the program, Sadhguru introduced her to all of us as a Isha Yoga teacher. And that's the time she was working in a bank. She was so aligned to Sadhguru and always being around him. I remember how she shared about her marriage. When I asked Viji, how did it all happen? She said that when she met Sadhguru, in that very first meet, we knew each other. That's it and that's marriage for me. It was a very simple wedding in a small Shiva temple in Irpu Falls. At that time, Sadhguru was, uh, he was developing a farm. And everything that happened in the farm, she would know, she would be there whenever she could. He would spend half the month in his farm, another half the month he would teach a class, either in Hyderabad or in uh, Mangalore or Coimbatore or Tirupur or one of these towns. Every weekend Vijay would travel to the initiation from Mysore. When whoever knew uh, Sadhguru or Viji, they always knew them as Jaggi and Viji. Uh, they were always together everywhere in everything that they did. They nurtured each other, played together, travelled extensively like gypsies. And such was their companionship. She did yoga only because it means something to me. She didn't do yoga for her health, she didn't do yoga for her well-being, she didn't care about her well-being. She did yoga only because it means something to me. I'm talking about it, so she was doing it. Any number of times she openly spoke about it to people. She wanted to do something that means something to me. <laughs> For Viji, who is my wife, but most of the time she more existed as my child than my wife because she was like that. But still we had a very engaging and engrossed kind of relationship all the time. She was like my shadow all the time, twelve years she just was everywhere that I was. She organizes the yoga program, she goes around, works, Throughout the day, she does everything. Every time that she uh, saw Sadhguru off, it's not that she will say bye and uh, you know, she'll go back to whatever uh, she was doing. She has to see him get onto the vehicle, she has to see him start, she has to wave and she has to keep waving until uh, you know, he is out of sight. Even after 10-12 years, after marriage, every day, almost every day this uh, situation is happening. She was very deeply devoted to Sadhguru as a person. She also constantly maintained an old posture that she had nothing to do with spirituality. She was only interested in uh, Sadhguru, the person who happened to be her husband and that was her only interest. She But, I mean, one can't uh, exist around Sadhguru unless in one way or the other one is deeply tied, to, committed to one's own spiritual growth. Even though she said that she's not on the spiritual path, it's not for her and all that, uh, I think constantly, right from the beginning, she, she couldn't help but to make progress on this path. Few 
moments and few incidents that I saw in Sadhguru. I mean, in my own life, these moments have had such deep impact. This must have happened with uh, Viji continuously in so many ways, which obviously had big impact. She would go to any extent uh, to kind of stand up for something. Anything that was happening, she was there. Not because uh, Sadhguru was there and she had to be there as a wife and things like that. No, she felt it because she was also equally wanting that you know, good things happen with people and people benefit from Sadhguru and make use of it. Like she is very soft in the heart, like if somebody has to say something, she has no hesitation even to take a bangle and give it to them and to solve the problem. Very, very relatable and affectionate woman I have ever come across. Just like three days, two days before I had to go to school, I'd be like, Amma, I need to do homework, I need to do homework. The last three days, I'd be writing on my right hand, she'd be writing something else with her left hand just to make it seem like it was my work. At times, Sadhguru has made this uh, clear to Viji in many ways that he never really, you know, kind of uses this word or talks about it openly. But to her, he had communicated to her that his disciples, their well-being and what needs to happen to them, it was far more important than uh, what his commitments were to her. Swami Nirmalananda was somebody I knew for a long time. I have met him almost twenty years ago or more in a very strange kind of atmosphere and ever since then some kind of… we've been little dallying with each other. Ninety-six uh, sometime early, we went uh, to BR Hills, me and Viji went there once. Radhe also was there at that time. We were talking to him and he said, uh, Next year, January, when the Uttarayana comes, I want to leave. I asked him why. He said, uh, I've lived as a yogi, but I don't want to live as a rogi. I want to die as a yogi. He was asking me, I, I really not clear about how to leave. He had built a small samadhi for himself. Will it work? What will happen? This and that. That's the first time I opened up to a completely different thing and I spoke to him certain details about what what is it that stops a person from leaving? What is it that makes a person leave? Viji was there, she was listening to all this and she burst out into tears and she cried and cried and cried. So I just ignored her and spoke, continued to speak to him. <laughs> then he was… he was also weeping off and on and asking me questions and questions and I… we went into great detail of many things which usually I'd never spoken anywhere. <laughs> We came down after meeting Nirmalananda, we just came and just after that place, I parked and I knew she was in some kind of mood. Kind of mood, I just stood on the road and it's an incredible view. So I just was standing on the road, Radhe was also playing around there. And she came and fell at my feet and said, I also want to do what he's doing. I was just trying to joke and try to you know, sort of dismissed the whole thing. She was crying and uh, she was saying, I want to go like him. I said, okay, you, are you willing to do the sadhana? You do it, let's see. I never thought she'll have the perseverance to stick on to it like forever. So I told her a few things, that you do these things, let me see how seriously you do. If things come up to that stage, we will see. From that day, she just went like, you know, 
he was another person altogether. <laughs> Suddenly, the last eight, nine months, she became all focused and like that. Because the way she was going, I saw oh, she's going so intensely. And after two, three months, she even started talking confidently that she's going to leave in another… Then I tried to slow her down a little bit. And I said, what's the point now? All these twelve years of marriage, we were only traveling. Only now, just then, we had just had a place to live. She could call her own and cook and do things, which meant a lot to her, I knew. So I said, what is a hurry and the girl is just seven years old. I said, things are working out well for you also, why now? So she said, right now my inside is feeling absolutely beautiful and outside everybody is wonderful to me. This is the time I want to leave. I don't know how long I'll be able to maintain this. All my life I've been confused, feels everything. Right now I'm in a space where I want to be, I want to live like this. So many times in my own ways I tried to slow her down a little bit. The next December came, 96 December. Then we knew Nirmalananda will leave. From there we went on Karma Yatra. This is a final lap of Dhyanalinga consecration. So I wanted to clear up a few things for people involved, so I took them on a six, seven state tour. I have nothing much to say. This twelve days trip is <laughs> yeah. I certainly experienced tremendous energy, and I can say I've taken one or two steps towards my growth. And certainly it help me, does help me to be a little more mature person and I consider myself very lucky to I only hope that I carry and be of some useful to everyone. By now, after the Karma Yatra, she was all glowing like a full moon. People who saw those few la last few weeks, they could clearly notice she was like blown like a full moon. Then I had to tell them, she says she's going to go shortly. They wouldn't believe it. I said, that's how it is. December Pavnami onwards, she started serving the people. Three Pavnami, she wanted to cook and serve and she wants to leave. Then on 21st, we dropped Radhe at school. And that's when she… she was talking to Radhe already that I won't be there after some time. The girl was just about fine, she didn't take that and we came back twenty-first evening from Uti. Twenty-third evening is when she left. Around uh, eight in the morning, uh, Sadhguru called me and asked me to be with Vichy because she was on a certain sadhana. And uh, that whole day I was with her, uh, meditating and doing several other activities. Shambho, 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 finished. It was… Just before that she went out, about six, eleven, six, twelve, that's the time. About six o'clock she went out, she wanted a rose flower. So she asked one of the brahmacharis to get a rose flower, they ran to the Vanaprastha ashram, got the rose flower, and came. She held the rose flower in her hand, shambho, shambho, shambho. Just seven, eight minutes, it was over.
was only after three days uh, while uh, sitting for a meditation, it really struck me that uh, she had known this coming. It's like her Maha Samadhi is just a promise to me. So if you really, that's what you want, it's a possibility. Like if you're so intensely seeking something as an ultimate, you can attain it. But definitely, Vijay's Maha Samadhi was a tremendous blow to my logical way of looking at life. I'm not army partner, but within our the Maha Samadhi, of course, uh, proves something like that. You know, what what was not visible, what was not uh, overtly visible to people's eyes. It's almost like uh, something else worked on, constantly something else was working with her and all the time. In the yogic traditions, held as a very sacred day, because many beings, either out of intent, or just sucked into it. Either chose or got induced into shedding their physical bodies on this day consciously. So many have done this in this tradition. Even here at Isha, we witnessed a great event for Viji, who had neither any sadhana behind her, nor did, he, nor did she have any great knowledge. With the simplicity of her emotion and the intensity of her focus towards what she wanted, this happened too effortlessly. The effortlessness which even accomplished yogis would go through a little bit of struggle to do such things. It happened too effortlessly. There are many ways to attain. Through pure energy or awareness or absolute selflessness or through devotion. Devotion I put last, but it's the quickest way. I put it last because the line between devotion and deception is so fine, a lot of people will miss it as they get more and more overwhelmed with deeper and deeper bursts of energy within them, slowly they become devote. That's good. The wisest ones are always devotees. It's a different kind of wisdom which logical minds can never understand. They grasp life in a different way. Viji was bursts of devotion and confusion, be of devotion and confusion. When she held on to a devotional spell for long enough, she made it. That's been the way, that was her way too. So three things that uh, she would have been very happy and proud to see was uh, the glorious way in which the Analinga consecration happened in spite of her absence at that time and of course everything else that is happening with Isha and the last but for her it wouldn't have been the least is uh, that her daughter has just become a young woman. <laughs>